All right. So let's start the class after a break. So what did you guys do? Start us. Yes, so it was just basic topics that we reviewed in 4th grade, 4th grade, 4th grade, 4th grade. So, does that mean you will get a perfect 100% in the start test? See, the grading system prevents there being any hundreds. It stops at 99, can you? Get 99. If, if it's that easy, right? No, so if it's easy, prove me that that is easy. And if it is still difficult, I'll help you prove it easy. We have to work together on that. I think I got like an 80 or something. Maybe. 80? Like maybe like an 85. 80, 85 is not fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. I want all of you to score at least a 95 in any test that you do. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to put pressure on you guys. I'm telling you guys that you and I are doing good job. I'm doing good job as a teacher. You're doing good job as a student. Only if you are getting 95 plus. If you want to get 95 in every test, you need to be disappointed in my test. I'm, I'm talking about only maths. You don't have to keep on failing to make yourself happier. Yeah? Uh, it's not your, uh, I don't want to get a consistent 95 because that will be disappointing. So uh, let me get a 25 in one test, 75 in another test. 49 in third test, 94 in other test. No, that will be highly unpredictable and that is not practically possible. You are either a good student or you are not a good student. There is no third option. Sometimes I'm a good student is not an option. Yeah. So, see, why, why I'm stressing on that because if you are learning the concepts right, see why you guys are here. You guys are here because no. I promise your parents that yes, I can ma make maths easier for you all. And your, your parents believe me, that's why they sent you here, they brought you here. If I was to predict my score, I would say anything above 92. Okay, so I, I'm taking it on its face value for now. Let's, let's, let's see how much we are getting, okay? And let's see who all are here. So Samia would need a notebook, give her a notebook. There's one there, and you might want to get her a pencil, a pen. Even one page is there, that's okay now. See the red one? If it has some pages, yeah? No? It's okay, it's okay, it's fine. Let Sanya absorb everything that I used in the class. And anyway, she will have the video to refer to, right? So, you can have mine too, uh huh. Yeah, I had a lot of drawings done, so she would not need that. It's okay. Okay, let, let's stay stay serious here. Okay, so, Tasvik, Ishan, everybody. Yeah, so, so what I was saying was, you guys are here in this class because I promised your parents that I'll make maths easier for you. And I cannot make it, make it easier for you alone. You guys have to work with me. Wherever, wherever you need help, Wherever you need help, you will ask me. Wherever I feel that you need help, I will let you get back. Okay, now coming back to Sanya. So how was the start test? It was good. Easy peasy? Okay, kind of? questions were, some questions were confusing, but yeah. Some questions are meant to be confusing, but. There was one question that I actually overthought about. It was basically just simple division, but I thought it was multiply fractions. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what, okay, so that was, she made it complicated because she overthought about it. How about you? I thought that the answer was the equation I was using was wrong. But what was the actual reason? Do you? Uh, meaning, uh, the question that, that got confusing for you, can you tell me what was the reason for that? Was it because there was some concept asked you were not clear about or was it because like what Myra said, she over thought about it and made it look confusing. Well, I, I, yeah. Kind of? Yeah. No, so, and again, I will keep on asking these kind of questions okay, because it's very important for me as a teacher to know what gets you guys confused, where you guys get stuck, what leads you to 
getting a question wrong. Yeah, I mean, if I if I can find the trend, I can try fixing the problem with the trend. Okay. Mm -mm. Don't trigger a discussion in the class. Okay. Now, Ishan, yeah. what was your finding from the test? What got you confused? Um, Joseph's one dollars. Uh, <coughs> I forgot what to push. No, you don't have to memorize the test after me. I'm just trying to know <coughs> what kind of situation or what type of problem gets you confused. Um, Think about it. That's it. Whatever you went through in the start test. Was it like easy peasy lemon squeezy or was there something that made you think that got you confused? Mm -hmm. Easy peasy? Okay. Is, is, it, is it because you are already running ahead of your class? You know a lot of things that, that fourth and fifth graders learn and you have already learned those things? Was that the reason? Or yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so Amar, here the deal is, if anybody doesn't bring the notebook, they have the video of the class. They can refer to it on this. So, no damage done. But thank you. All right. So, um, fine. Yeah, did you get your answer? I think I have um, a problem on one question, but I think I just uh, overthought it, so I never... Uh -huh. So, okay, next time, when you go for any test, or you come across any question, always think about it. Do it, and once you, are, once you finish that sum, or once you get confused or get stuck, just spend a few seconds to think about it. Don't play with notebook, uh, Ishan. Don't play with that. Pay attention here. So I'm saying, if you get stuck with any question, any of you, okay, just spend a few seconds to think about it. Why you are getting stuck? Is it because this question is difficult? Is it because whatever calculation is asking for, you don't know how to do it? Or is it because you are making it too complicated? Most of the times, we make it look complicated. That's where the Tran method that I talk about. Ishan, what is it? I, I think I forgot about it. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Like you forgot to bring your water bottle, forget to drink water also. For the next 30 minutes. Alright. So, uh, any, any question, any exam, read the question and then try solving it the way we have learned so far okay no more uh, theory on this one let's get going with what we want to learn today how many of you know about coordinate planes you also know have you heard about it you know i mean it's okay not knowing is not a mistake it's fine i mean good that somebody doesn't know that's why i'll teach otherwise what is the point okay you know about coordinate planes you you have not heard about it Myra, have you heard about it? Don't keep playing with the notebook. Pay attention to the class. When, when there's something to note down, I will let you know. Okay? Pay attention to the class. Don't, don't keep doing parallel things. Okay? Fix your classes. Okay. So, what is a coordinate plane? Taswi, can you tell me what is a coordinate plane? If you have to teach me what is a coordinate plane, what will you tell me? Let's say, I, I don't know what is a coordinate plane. How will you explain that to me? I'm just asking. Try it. Um, okay, how about you? A coordinate plane is it like, it's kind of like a way to graph points and a way to um, symbolize a relationship between an X and a Y coordinate. Okay, that's, that's, that's a definition. Okay, now let's, let's look at it like a child. I'll say, so what we are learning is called coordinate 
plane. Yeah? Now, plane is a plane, a surface, not a plane, a plane surface. Right? Now, let's say, let's say I have to draw a line between two points. This is one point and this other point. Easy? You can draw it. If you have to draw a triangle and somebody says, I'm giving you three points, join them to make a triangle. Yeah, done. Somebody wants to draw quadrilateral. Basically, there are four points. You join them together. That makes the quadrilateral. Okay. So, by talking about so many points, the point that I'm trying to make here is the other points which you are joining. Ishan here. The chair doesn't have anything to teach you. Okay. There are two points. When you join them, it makes a line segment or line. But the two points could be here, 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 here. Look at these lines. What is the difference? The points are located in different places. That's why the lines are different. Now, how do you know which point is where? What is, yeah. Um, the dot um, represents like the point. Yeah, the dot represents the point, but how do I know where is this point? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Where? Um, because the line is like attached to it. No, no, line is not attached to it. Line is drawn by joining the points. The line came into existence only because we were trying to join the points. If we did not join the points, the line would not, would not have been there. Hmm? Now, see, I'm, I'm making you guys think. This point, this point, this point, this point, what is the difference? They have different locations on the board. Yeah? Yeah? And if you look at this point, how do you look at this point? Oh, this is near the top line yeah and this is this far from here so this point this point this point all these are equal distance from the top line but the difference is how far it is from this side this is closer this is farther 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 right so basically if you're trying to locate any point you're trying to locate it against some fixed side and that tells you where exactly the point is. If you look at this point now and this point now, what do you find? Oh, this point is closer to this side and this close to this side. Well, this point is this far from this <coughs> side and this far from this side. Yeah. Now, widen your visualization skills. Do you know what is visualization? When you imagine something. So, have you guys heard about the number line? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. It what goes is, on forever. What does the number line look like? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and each way. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. Minus five and keep going. Yeah. So imagine there are two number lines perpendicular to each other, cutting each other in the middle. Meaning, this is one number line. One, two, three, four, five, minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay. And both are meeting at the center point, which is zero. Okay, so there is one horizontal line, one vertical line. Now you look at this point, any point, okay, this point. You can say that okay, fine, this one is 
this far from this line and this far from this line. Now you can locate a point. If you look at this point, you can find locate this, this point and this point. What is the difference? This point is cutting at 6 and 5. This point is cutting at 3 and 3. Yeah? 3 away from this number line and 3 away from this number line. If you, if you draw a perpendicular line. Don't draw a line in the... No, I'm building a pencil in this. It's okay, just pay attention. Oh, yeah. Also, how do you spell... Um, how do you spell it? What do you spell? Like, let's if you do it right now. This is, that, that's what, I'm, I'm getting to it, okay? I'm still telling you guys, I'm still not told you what is x axis, y axis. I'm still telling you these are two number lines. Cutting each other is zero, okay? And are perpendicular to each other, meaning, this is standing on this one. This is making 90 degree, whatever it is. Last week, are you with me? So, so far whatever we have done, we have just found a way to locate a point against two number lines. And these number lines, we have to give it a name. Number line, this horizontal number line is a vertical number line. We have to give some name to it. So let's say this is X and this one is called Y. So in mathematical term we say y axis, this is x axis. This combination of two number lines cutting each other at 90 degree in the x and y axis or x and y plane is called coordinate planes. Which helps you locate any point against this axis or this axis. Now let's say if you look at this point here, some point here. And some point here. What do you see? Here it is y is minus, x is also minus. So here, if I have to find out the x value of this, x value of this what? How far is 1, 2, minus 2. Y value of this is again minus 2. So here, if I look at this one, this will be 3 and 3. This will be 6 and 5. So look at this one. Here value of our distance from x and y axis are all positive. That's why the value of x and y is positive. Here this is in the negative side of this where well, x this is you know, meeting with the negative of the number line in the x direction and negative of the number line in the y direction. Everything is negative here. So this, this point and this point, you can find that, okay, this is in negative side, this is in the positive side. And you can locate these points. If tomorrow if you have to join these two points to make a line, this is what the line will be. So, I know there will be something still complicated here. I will try explaining it further. But, in simple terms, a coordinate plane is nothing but a combination of two number lines that helps you locate any point against these two number lines which are called x and y axis. Okay. Now imagine this is a Google map. Okay. Imagine this page is a Google map. Okay. And this is Taswik's house. This is Ishan's house. This is Sanya's house and this is Maya's house. Let's say this is Adrik's house. Okay. So here in this plane, which is a coordinate plane, which we are referring as a Google map, every point can be located. Where exactly is Tasvik's house? And you can locate this by you know, referring it against the X or Y axis. If you look at the phone and see the Google map. Every address that you pick up, that turns out to be a point. Yeah? You say starting point is this, ending point, wherever you want to go. And it tries to draw a line between these two and say, okay, this is the path that you have to follow. So, every 
location, a free point that you try to find out on anything which is a map or a surface. It uses some reference lines like this to find out where exactly the point is. Okay. Even if you guys have ever paid attention to how the globe looks like, in the globe also you see you will see a lot of lines are there. Yeah. I'll not go talking about that, but in summary, you will see that there are some fixed lines which which kind of identifies the whole map as a center line, as a, as a vertical line. And every location on earth gets referenced against those lines, how far it is from that line. Same purpose is solved by these coordinate planes also. These are like two fixed lines. If you say this is Sanya's address, you say, okay, Sanya's address in mathematical term will be like how far on X, one, two, three, four. It is somewhere around oh, four, four on X and three on Y. So Sanya's address, Sanya might write, uh, I don't know what, what her exact address is. So let's say she, her address is 8700 Jericho Drive. 8700 Jericho Drive is a, is a what do you call it, a, a reference number. But actually on the map, it will be something like 4 comma 3. But remembering 4 comma 3 is difficult that's why we use logical names like Jericho Drive or, or Harrell Drive or those are logical names but actually on the map it will not be like a Jericho Drive it will be 2 comma 4 or something like that okay if you if you ever pay attention to the google map you will see those coordinates being written actually okay so don't worry too much about it. what I'm saying is this is just a method for us to locate any point against some fixed reference line and that is what is called coordinate planes. Here we say this is x axis, this is y axis. So now you look at this surface, okay? Now if you look at this classroom, I can draw two lines here. One I will call it x axis, one I will call it y axis. Now, so if I'm drawing it on the surface, then we are either looking in this direction or that direction. Two dimensions, two directions. If you look at, if you start moving up, meaning you have a rectangle or a square, you make that as a cuboid, meaning you give some height to it also. Or, or like this. Look at this, this is like a rectangle. Yeah? I'm drawing it on the surface, this is a rectangle. So far you have not seen the height, but if you pay attention here, what you see, there are pages, a lot of pages stack one after another. If you add more pages to it, it will become taller. So you are looking at length, width, and then you are looking at height also. So X, Y, and then the third direction, Z. So here in the coordinate plane, we are only looking at two di dimensions, X and Y. Tomorrow when you add height to it also, that is when the third dimension will come into play. Don't worry about it right now. Don't have to worry about the third dimension right now. But I am just telling you that Anything that you try locating, if you are locating on the surface, it's X and Y. If you are locating something in the air, that is when a third dimension, Z will also come into picture, height will also come into picture. Okay. So, um, let's not worry about the third dimension for now. Let's focus on these two, uh, two dimensions. Okay. So, um, how do we read it now? Let's say, let's do some games here, okay? Um, how, do, how do we spell a co... Um, coordinate place, coordinate. Co... Coordinate. Coordinate. Co I mean, up to you. You can write it both ways. Now, so let's play some games here. Let's say, 
how do I denote this point? What is the x value and what is the y value of this one? Meaning, what is on the x side, what is on the y side for this point? What you will do is, you see when you look at the, when this is on the graph paper, it will be easy to find. Okay? But I am just drawing it here. If I am trying to find a coordinate, meaning x, what is the value of x for this one? 4. 4. Last week, Sanya, Maira. What is the value of x for this one, this point? What is the value of x? 4. 4. 4. Yeah? What is the value of y on this one? 3. 3. Everybody with me? Yeah. Do you know how to find that? So, when you look at this in the graph paper, it will be easy to find, okay? Here, it, there could be some manual error because I am drawing it myself. But if you look at the graph, it will be easy. 4. So, you will write this as 4, 3, okay? Now, let's let's do this one. Who will tell me what is the x and y coordinate for this one? X is 3. Uh-huh. And y is minus 2. Minus 1 to the first. Okay. Let's see who, uh, let's see Sanya. What will be the x and y for this one? 4. 4. Okay. And what is the y for this one? X is, x is this side. Oh, minus 2 and minus 2. These are easy ones, just pay a little attention, okay? Uh, Ishan, tell me what is the x and y coordinate for this one? Ne negative um, 4. Negative 4 and? And um, 3. Okay. Myra, is correct? Yeah. No, there's nothing to draw, trust me. All that I'm doing here right now, just pay attention to this, it will be enough. It is correct. It shall say this point is 4 and 3. Yes. It's correct? Okay. So, my dad will tell me this one. What is x and y for this one? Huh? What are the coordinates? I mean, I'm saying x and y. I can always say coordinates. Coordinates meaning x and y coordinates. So, the coordinates for, um, that, for that quadrant is 5. Uh -huh. 5. The x coordinate is 5 and the y coordinate is 1. That's why I say pay attention. Is it oh. 5? Uh, the x, the, y, the x coordinate is minus 5. Yeah, so there's a difference between minus 5 and 5. Okay, the y coordinate is 2. No, is it 1 or 2? Minus 1. Okay. It's 1 here. So, what is it 1 or what is minus 1? Huh? Huh? What? Huh? Minus 1. Minus 1. See, one thing that is, is negative or positive is very important because if you say 5 and 1, it will be here. If you say, uh, sorry, 5 and 1, 5 and 1 will be here. Minus 5 and 1, minus 1 is here. The points are far apart. Okay? So, pay very much, I mean, lot of attention to each and every detail. Okay? One, if you, if you change negative to positive, Positive to negative, it will go in a different place altogether. Okay, so so be careful. So you guys understood what is this one, right? Yeah, Ishan. Ishan. Something wrong with my It's okay. Everybody understood this part, right? Yeah. If 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 you are given any, if somebody starts talking about coordinate plane, you will be able to relate what exactly it is. Yes, that is one thing, and then you'll be able to. If somebody gives you the x and y coordinates, you will be able to locate a point also. If somebody gives you a point, you will be able to find the x and y coordinates for that also, right? Now, let's give some name. Like, these two number lines, we gave a name. We call this x-axis and the vertical one we call y-axis. Okay? That, that's what makes the coordinate plane, x and y-axis. Now, let's say this is first quadrant. The first side with x and y both positive, we are calling it first quadrant. This will be second quadrant. This will be third quadrant. This will be fourth quadrant. 
Now, only thing you have to remember is you are starting from here. This is the first quadrant, and you are going anti-clockwise. You are not going clockwise. So this is first quadrant. This is second quadrant. This is third quadrant, and this is fourth quadrant. Now, if you are in the third quadrant, what is the value of x and y? Which one is positive? Which one is negative? If you are in the third quadrant, which one is positive? Which one is negative? Third quadrant, x and y are both negative. That's why they are both negative. Wonderful. Sanya, if you are in the first quadrant, which one is positive? Which one is negative? Yes, yeah, it's okay. Don't don't refer to this one. You just have to think. Just there is nothing to memorize. Yeah. If you are in the first quadrant, which one? Both are positive, right? Simple. So just just think, and you'll get the answer. If you are in the second quadrant, which one is positive? Which one is negative? Which one? If you are in the second quadrant, which one is positive? Which one is negative? Which one is the second? Which one is second quadrant? That that is something. Should be known because I have explained that it is also written right in front of you. Oh, uh, negative four and three. Negative four. No. So my, you have to hear the question, okay? So that is where, if you want to really avoid the confusion with any question, you have to hear the question. You have to read the question carefully, okay? So don't get worried by the insects around you. Don't get worried by somebody walking on the road. Pay attention to what is taught in the class. I said this is first quadrant, this is second quadrant, this is third quadrant, this is fourth quadrant. I'm saying this is true for any point. Okay, like when I ask Tasvir, say okay, what is positive, what is negative in the third quadrant? As soon as I said third quadrant, he figured out okay, this is the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, any point that you pick up, x and y both are negative. When I ask Sanya. That in the first quadrant, which one is positive, which one is negative? As soon as I said first quadrant, she figured out. We are talking about this guy. Here, x is positive, y is positive. You cannot have any value in this quadrant which has any other value negative. So when I am asking you, second quadrant, which one is positive, which one is negative? So I'm, when I am talking about second quadrant, I am essentially talking about this particular section. Yeah. Any point. I am not talking about minus four three. Um, one of them is negative and one of them is positive. Which one is negative? Four is negative. The four, I'm not talking about four. I'm talking about any point on this in this quadrant. Three axis. X or Y? You have to say. Um, X. Yeah, no, no doubt. You should say with confidence. X. What X? Positive. No, negative. No, no. I mean, I'm just asking. I want to know how confident you are. Negative X. X is C. Always think. See math. You don't have to memorize anything. Okay. If you are going out of this class and and you think that you have to memorize something, that means I'm not teaching well. Okay. Here in this this only thing you have to keep in mind is when I'm talking about a coordinate plane, what is that I'm talking about? I'm talking about two two number lines perpendicular to each other, cutting at zero. Now, when I'm saying any quadrant, first, second, third, fourth, okay, this is how it is. I'm talking about second quadrant. Which one is positive? Which one is negative? Second quadrant. When I'm saying, I'm talking about this quadrant, meaning anything on the horizontal side, the x-axis, has to be negative because this is post zero. So, x value of x in the second quadrant will be always negative. Value of y in the second quadrant will be always Positive. So, if you pay attention in the class for forty-five minutes or fifty minutes, whatever is the duration of our class, math will become fun. If you don't pay attention here, I don't know if there is a simpler way, easier way to explain maths. There are not many easier ways, right? So. 
I I never asked you guys to memorize anything, okay? Apart from table, and good that I remember it now. I'll ask you guys questions on tables to see how comfortable you are still. So, on the coordinate planes, anything that is not understood. X and Y axis, two number lines meeting each other at zero, making four quadrants. How to locate a point? Find out the X and Y coordinate for those. Easy. Readable, yeah, yeah. Okay. So keep it away from your feet, okay? Because we worship box, yeah. Okay. So this part is clear. Yeah. Any doubt? No. no. If you have any doubt, spend some ten fifteen minutes to watch the video of the class once I upload it. It will make it clear, and it's okay to revise. Okay, something that you learn. You forget. It's it's okay to forget. It's okay to make mistakes, but it's not okay to not try to learn. All right. So let's spend some time doing tables. Huh? What? Okay, let's see. Uh, <coughs> let's start with this time. We'll go at the clockwise. So I'll ask some questions and see. Uh, again, it is more to see how how much of revision, how much you are in touch with the tables. So you had memorized tables still? Um, I think. Eight. Uh, it's the same as possible. No, eight. eight. Up to eight. It's fine. I mean. Last week might not have memorized. You might have memorized, or vice versa. Doesn't matter. It's for individuals. If you think that you have done tables till ten, I'm okay asking questions till ten. So let me ask till eight, okay? Eight seven zero. Eight seven zero or eighty six. Okay, six. Your answer was right, but it took time that we have to minimize. Six seven zero. Six seven zero or forty. Forty. Forty two. Forty two. Seven nine zero. Sixty three. Nine. Ah, uh, okay. Five eight zero. Five eight or forty. Okay. Six eight zero. Six eight or forty. <coughs> okay. Five nine zero. Um, forty five. Hmm. Six zero. Six six or thirty six. Okay. Seven nine zero. Seven nine or sixty three. Okay. So, uh, you made less mistakes, which is good thing. But then, I would say, you still have to memorize the tables. I, I mean, you are doing okay, which is not acceptable. You have to do better. Why I am saying so is, I would want tables to be like this: six nine zero fifty four. If there is even a fraction of second involved to get the answer, that means that needs more practice. So, next class, which is not tomorrow, I am talking about the class on next Saturday. Table till eight. Is a must for you. Meaning, I would want you to be able to answer those faster. Like one second. One second is not of time. Seven seven zero forty nine. There was no even one second. Seven seven zero forty nine. That that is one second. Seven eight zero fifty six is not one second. Nine eight zero seventy two is not one second. I want to like that. Okay. All right. So I want to see a better performance on next Saturday. Okay. Okay. Up to table eight. Let's see the, how how much is uh, task we can touch. So six nine zero. Nine two zero. Seven nine zero. Eight seven. Six eight zero. Three eight. Four nine zero. 
don't be complacent and make sure that you always stay on top of things you you stay as efficient as accurate as fast as possible with tables because that is going to be your backbone for maths okay so with that being said we come to the end of the class